episode, we will be talking with professionals from three programs within the Business Administration Department at Wiregrass Technical College, Business Management, Business Technology, and Accounting. The Accounting program at Wiregrass Georgia Technical College is a three to four year semester program that focuses on the skills necessary for a career in accounting. These skills specifically focus on preparation of financial statements, recording business transactions, calculating adjustments, learning how to prepare payroll tax returns, basic income tax returns, and computerized accounting. The full program is offered on the Parasta and Coffee's campuses. Many courses are also offered online. Business Management is a three to four semester degree and diploma program offered on both the Coffee and Parasta campuses. Students are empowered with the skills necessary to enter the workforce in a management or supervisory position in a broad variety of business and industries. Business Technology is a three to four semester program focusing on information technology applications and the latest in high-tech office administration. In addition to word processing, database, spreadsheets, presentations, and desktop publishing courses, opportunities to attain national industry certification are provided within the program. The Business Technology degree program is offered on the Ben Hill Irwin campus, Coffee campus, and Valdosta campus. The Business Technology diploma program is offered on all four campuses. Most classes are available online as well. Welcome, all of you. Thank you for showing up for this episode of the Wiregrass Future Talk series. Thank you for being here and talking to the students. Uh, I first wanted to give an introduction to each and one of you. Uh, first, we have Whitney Head, who is a director of Chick-fil-A, been there for 10 years in the food service industry, uh, who has an Associate of Applied Science in Business Management, and you also have a Bachelor's in Business as well. Thank you for being here. Uh, next, we have Amanda Dasher, who's an accountant at Langdale Industries. Been there uh, two and a half, up to three years. Um, you have an AS, uh, or associate, excuse me, in business administration. I gotta watch those things. Uh, and then a, uh, a bachelor's in business administration as well. And you also have a master's in accounting. Uh, so a fellow master's degree, okay. Uh, and you are currently sitting for the CPA exam, which the uh, accountants would know about that. Uh, and you finished two of four parts, correct? Yes. All right, you'll have to explain that later when I ask about that. <laughs> Uh, and then finally we have Jessica Loveless, who is Enrollment Management Coordinator, four years in industry, uh, Associate of Applied Science, Business Administrative Technology, Wiregrass, Georgia Technical College. Uh, and you also have a Microsoft Office Specialist Certification. All right. Um, to begin, there we go. To begin, um, just tell, we'll start with you, and then when you're done, continue. Um, tell us a little bit about your career, how you got started, uh, how long you've been working in field and so on. Okay, um, so I moved to Valdosta to begin um, my education and realized that I needed a job first. So I have a friend that was at Chick-fil-A, told me that they worked around my school schedule, so that's why I started with Chick-fil-A, um, just, just for a part-time job. I realized later, like a year later, that I enjoyed working there. I loved the business, everything, everything about it, actually. Um, so I knew that I needed to get a degree there or get a degree to be able to um, become an operator, and that's my goal. So I've been working with Chick-fil-A for 10 years now, and my goal was to be an operator within the next two or three years, hopefully. Okay. Um, What's an operator? An operator actually owns the business. Okay. So right. you have to go through an extensive interview process to be an operator and then a two-year program that you're traveling around the, the states opening up new restaurants before you can even become an operator. So I'm in the process of trying to get into the door of that. And you still get Sundays off? I do still get Sundays <laughs> off. <laughs> nice. Excellent. All right. Um, I'm Amanda Dasher. I'm an accountant at Lando Industries. I've been there since 2014. Um, I began working there after I met my employer at a, uh, I guess you'd call it a job fair, and oh. dropped the mic, sorry, and um, sorry. I lost what I was saying. No. You want to start over? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I'm Amanda Dasher, and I work at Lando Industries as an accountant. 
I've been there since uh, 2014, and I love it there. I enjoy all the people that I work with, and they're like a little family to me, and um, it's really fun. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, now, of course, you do accounting, yes. and uh, I know the accountants uh, probably understand that you have multiple accounts. Langdale Industries is quite yes. wide. Yes, uh, now, how many accounts did you say you you? I have about have? six companies that I do the um, daily accounting for, and then the month and close. Okay. And, um, then, as, as well as helping any other accountants with their bigger companies. Okay. All right. All right, and finally. Um, I'm Jessica Loveless. Um, I'm currently employed here at Wiregrass. Um, I started out, I moved, was new to the area. At first, um, I had went to nursing school, um, graduated, got my license, worked in the nursing field, um, and then decided that the nursing field wasn't for me. Um, so I, I had moved, to, was new to the area, started coming back to school, um, needed a job. So I started out as a work study um, in the registrar's office, um, um, a position came available in admissions. So as I was still working um, and and going to school for business technology, I uh, um, applied for the position and got the position as admissions technician. Mm -hmm. um, closer to the end of my. Uh, degree as mm -hmm. I was seeking my degree um, a couple different positions came available um, more salary of right, course right, so right, right. I worked in the advising center for a month and then the coordinator position came available um, so I applied for it and um, was almost done with right. my associate's degree and got the position okay cool excellent well um, the first question we have, besides the introduction there, is um, your job. And of course, we'll start here and work away over. Um, how, how does one apply for a job in this field? Uh, any specific licenses or certification requirements? Obviously, your, your degree or diploma that you get from Wiregrass, but are there anything else uh, that they may have? So how do they apply, and then what else they may they need? So just working at Chick-fil-A, you don't really need anything, but with, in my career, what I'm trying to do is become an operator. Um, you have to have a degree. So like you said, it's what, what my degree is in, um, which you can actually get in anything, but I want it to be business. So since I am going to be doing right. business, owning a business, um, so yeah, just getting a, your degree and really understanding. Well, that's why I chose uh, Wiregrass because it is definitely, it was uh, more, I can't even think what I'm trying to say. Um, like it's in the world, to the yeah. It was. Well, it's more in in the the world. Like what's going on. So they were. I can't even talk. Um, <laughs> they hands on. Thank you. <laughs> I can't, I'm using my hands. So yeah, it's more hands on. So right. and I and I knew that. So I wanted to um, understand and learn everything about the whole hands on thing more so than another. Uh, university so right um, uh, that's a lot of we hear that a lot uh, four-year universities uh, tend to be more theory based whereas a technical school like us uh, is a lot more hands-on yes. um, and especially I know from uh, from the standpoint here but also from what I teach uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's very much the case so yes yeah, that makes perfect sense how does one apply for or how, how did you um, apply for this job well, I've met my employer at a job fair hosted at Valdosta State University, um, and I would encourage anyone who's seeking a job, whether it's in accounting or any other um, field, to visit any kind of job fair that um, is available. This kind of gives you a chance to network with potential employers and kind of see what's out there. Um, accounting is so broad. Um, you have the CPA firms, you know, that's what most people think of when they think accounting is you have to be a CPA, and that's not the case. Um, you can go into private accounting, which is what I'm in, um, and there's just, you know, bookkeeping, you know, if you don't want to climb all the way up the ladder, if you want to just do typical bookkeeping. Um, but that would be my starting point is to visit any kind of job fair that's available out there, and that's where I started. Okay. Now, okay, so um, let's say I, I, I come to Wiregrass and I get a degree in accounting. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you don't have to be a CPA right. to become an accountant. Um, but you need it, right? 
it eventually. depends on what you um, want to do. If you want to actually go and practice um, your practice accounting and do people's taxes, then yes, you would have to have your CPA. Okay. Um, as far as what I do, I don't necessarily have to have my CPA, but it will help, um, you know, move up the ladder and to you know, just get my hands wet in different areas of the business. But um, you it's know, a, necessarily, it, it's very helpful. Right. Yes. If you want to continue. And it doesn't necessarily career. have to be a CPA. You can have a CMA, and there's many other certifications that you can get in accounting. Okay. So. Okay. I'm gonna have to ask you those. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about accounting. Um, okay. And uh, how, how did you get the job here at Wiregrass? I know you, you talked about it earlier, but yeah. Um, if you want to apply for Wiregrass on the Wiregrass website, which is www.wiregrass.edu, right. in the, the left-hand top of the page, it has an employment tab. You click on it, and you have to fill out a profile and actually fill out, you know, download your resume and um, that kind of thing. But that's how you initially apply for it. You don't, um, for admissions technician, you don't technically have to have a degree. Um, but if you want to move up the ladder, um, you do have to have some type of of background right. education right and uh, of course moving up the ladder means a significant pay increase in pay which right. that's always good um, and then of course usually benefits as well can come with that um, challenges you face when starting this career especially coming out of school um, essentially this is one of those if you knew then what you know now um, what were challenges that you faced coming out of here or, or whatever school you attended and going into the career um, really the only challenges I face with Chick-fil-A, because it's, you know, Chick-fil-A is a fast food restaurant basically, so right. um, the challenges that I faced were that I had to give up my hometown and be able to travel around, because um, that's what technically I'll have to do as an operator. I, I can't choose to um, build a Chick-fil-A right down the road, like right. I, it's wherever they want it, right. and so I have to travel for the two years that they have for that um, program and to become an operator, and then they choose where I locate at. So to me, that would be the biggest, the biggest challenge. So. And it seems to me, just by counting, well, Valdosta has two Chick-fil-A's, three I guess if you count the one in the mall. Mm -hmm. Whereas we have about 25 McDonald's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't make sense, but... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, what I mean is that Chick-fil-A is a lot more cautious mm -hmm. when building their stores, which means that's less opportunity for you in certain areas, so that alludes to why you probably would have to move around a lot. Yes, so, sir. Yeah. Um, and what about you? Uh, like, what uh, challenges that you had first coming out of school that you uh, had The to challenges face? I had were transitioning from doing, like, book work, accounting, to the actual hands-on. Um, I didn't attend Wiregrass. She said there was a lot more hands-on here. I attended VSU, and um, I, I totally enjoyed my education. I feel like I really got a really good education, but we did do book work, and there's only so much you can teach in a classroom. Right. And um, I feel like there's no substitute for on-the-job training. So I learned a lot just the you know, the first couple weeks at work, and it was a little overwhelming to start with. But um, I would tell anyone, you know, not to get overwhelmed the, the first week when you don't know what you know what to do because they're going to teach you and um, they're going to teach you the way they want it done and it's going to be different for every firm. I think that's a good point that you brought up. Uh, you said you graduated from VSU, yes. not at Wiregrass. However, you still had the mentality of this is book work, this is not you know the real thing. Right. We, we do hear that a lot uh, when we teach in our classes. Uh, students do book work mm -hmm. and then when they leave it's a lot different. Right. But it, it doesn't matter what college you go to, right. you're going to be doing Mm -hmm. Book work. And that, I think that's the the best way to learn the basics of accounting is right. to sit there and just do, you know, repetition, repetition. That's the right. way you learn anything, basically. Right. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, challenges that you face coming out of, of school? Um, I would say prioritizing my time um, with... Um, you know, we, we see a lot of students and customer service is, is, the, is the main thing and you have a lot of other duties. So prioritizing your time um, was a difficult task to begin with to, to kind of get your schedule along the way because you're going from book work to pretty much right. like she said to, to hands on and um, you can write it all down and it sounds good, but when you actually physically do it, it makes a difference. Right. So time prioritization. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that's a, I like that one. That's a, 
That is so true in a lot of our, our fields that we teach here. Um, we students have a hard enough time prioritizing tests and studying for them, so. <laughs> um, okay, uh, the big question I know a lot of these students want to ask, money, salary. Uh, now, you don't have to tell me yours, okay, that's personal, but what are their expectations? What, coming out of the BAT program, the accounting programs, what is a starting salary they should expect coming out? Mm. Say Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have a degree, then they'll start you out at minimum wage. Right. Having a degree definitely will help that um, a little bit. So roughly for Chick-fil-A, it's around $10. Um, and then if you get a bachelor's degree, or so on, then it will move on up. Um, right. So that can put you around 14 or 15 then. So it's just according to how much schooling you have. Um, and in Chick-fil-A is how much experience you have as well. So, you know, being I've been there for 10 years and I have my degrees, then um, it's it's in a higher pay rate. Right. So, yes, sir. So more education, more money. Yes, sir. That kind of coincides. <laughs> uh, something we preach. Um, for if you go to school for your bachelor's and you know also continue on to your master's, um, some of the I guess the average salary that I've done some research around the Valdosta, Georgia area um, was around forty to fifty thousand a year starting out. Um, of course, this depends on the size of the company that you're with, uh, what you're doing there, your education, your experience, and um, that was just for Valdosta. You know, if you go you know to the Atlanta area, of course, you're probably looking at a little bit more. Um, but then again, you're moving to Atlanta. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the areas, because uh, uh, because I teach video game design, the industry in California is mm -hmm. a lot more significant in right. jobs out there. However, making a hundred thousand dollars a year in California is actually um, lower middle income, almost right. lower income. Because the cost of living um, in Atlanta and California right. is much more than yeah. My uh, my house is. 14, 1,500 square feet. It's, I guess, about a hundred and twenty-five, hundred three thousand dollar house here in Valdosta. In California, would be about an eight hundred to a million dollar house, wow. depending on where it's at. Now, if I'm way up in the mountain, well, it might burn down if I'm in the mountains. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I'm near the, if I'm near the beach, it, it gets in Santa yeah. Monica. That area, right. it gets really expensive. So yeah, you're right. Uh, the, the, area you live in, you know, especially Atlanta area, yes. costs more. And as she said, the more experience and education you get, you know, that's subject to change. Right, um, right. The more certifications the, you get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, salary expectations come out, like maybe going into education. What have you seen so far? Um, I would say entry level into, you know, from associate's degree, because that's as far as I've got so far as associates, but entry entry level um, with nothing would be around 25000 a year and then um, with your associate's degree, it's going to be around forty. Okay. So it's a, a significant increase, right. and of course, you know, with experience um, and time, you know, that compensates for education in some areas. So right. you could um, definitely go up the ladder and make more money. Okay. Now, um, I do want to mention this because this is something that I know a lot of students uh, don't think about, um, which is uh, health care and retirement. Yes. Um, and then other things like dental and optical, which could be an option. Um, are those included in the packages that may be available for students who are coming out of school? For the Chick-fil-A, um, it's according on the operator. Like they can give you the health plan, um, insurance coverage and things like that, but it's, it's completely up to the operator. Okay. But being an operator, which is what I want to do, um, yeah, they definitely, all that is included with the insurance. that being the operator of that store. Right. So me, as an operator, I would definitely allow that, allow that option for my employees to, right. to take on. So, so you, if you don't like what the operator offers, you go find another operator. Kind of, yeah. Could, you could. <laughs> you okay. could. Okay. All right. Yes, uh, Lando Industries, is, their benefits are great. And usually after uh, working there for a year, you've got um, your health benefits, your 401k benefits, um, you have paid vacation. Um, and it's it's reason the um, health care benefits are you know reasonable price that you're not gonna right. you know spend your whole paycheck basically on uh, paying your insurance and everything. But yes, that is definitely an option. Okay, so. and of course I work at Wiregrass right. too, but I think my mine might be different. I'm not sure, but right uh, with Wiregrass you you are it is an option yeah. that you can 
um, get health care, um, retirement. Um, there's annual leave, sick leave, you know, different types of benefits. I know like with here, it's really good benefit, I think. You know, every month after um, up to five years, you know, you get 10 hours annual leave and 10 hours sick leave every month. So that adds up. Um, and then you, your sick leave, what you don't use, you can actually roll it over to your retirement okay. and can retire early. Yeah, nice. yeah education uh, is nice, uh, especially when you get um, certain, like we just had 4th of July week off. You know, right. it's, it's very rare in some areas. So, um, What is something that you would want to tell students to understand that they may not get in the classroom or from training? Um, especially like if all you do is book work, that kind of thing. What's something that they need to expect to understand when they get out into that real world and they get that job? To expect? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, you know, you learn so much in the classroom. Yeah. But then you get in there, you get your hands dirty, and then yeah. suddenly, uh-oh, this doesn't follow chapter one, pages yeah, five, six, definitely. and seven. Um, I think with just dealing with people in general, <laughs> customers, <laughs> um, it's different. Like a book can't tell you how to speak. Uh, speak with someone and right. especially when they're yelling at you because you messed up their chicken sandwich um, right. it doesn't it doesn't train you on that so really just being a like I say a people person um, and understanding like being able to hold your self back because like Chick-fil-A customers always right um, and you know you have to be willing to accept that and do whatever is best for the, the business at that time and so yeah definitely um, Understanding people and learning how to right. communicate with people is is key. You ever been to overseas, uh, like Europe, England, or anything like that? I haven't. I no, said oh, uh, <laughs> they have a different standard when it comes to that. Sometimes they say the customer is not always right. Yeah, <laughs> like, we kind of want to uh, say that as well. Yeah, but, you know. yeah, it's it's interesting <laughs> over there when you yeah. uh, go to restaurants and yeah, yeah, they run into that. But uh, okay, yeah. So yes, dealing with people. Yeah, you know, anytime you deal with the public, you yeah, have definitely. to have the mentality for the. Yeah, communication the, yeah. Is, is the key to everything. Um, so just really understanding how to communicate with different kinds of people um, is the biggest thing I would tell you to do, watch out for. Right, so. okay, communication, okay. Um, I'd say that would be a very good, um, there's a very, it's the same in the accounting industry. Uh, you work really close with people, you know, up and down the hallways and sometimes their views on something may not be the same views that you have. Um, but then again, you got to learn to, you know, kind of step back and you see it, their point of view. Um, but also, just with, I was going on that. <laughs> but uh, that's it. Okay. So now, you work in a, uh, do you work in your own office or is it like a cubicle type setup? I have my own office. Okay. Um, there's four offices down right. our hallway. It's here. Okay. Um, um, now, with accounting, are you mostly working by yourself or do you work with other accountants on things? Uh, most of the time it's working by myself. Okay. Um, when it comes to month and close, usually I'll help um, some of the other accountants to have some of the bigger companies um, with some of their stuff, you know, depreciation schedules and stuff like that. Right. Um, but most of the time it's hands on with just me in my office. So. Right. Okay. Um, and, and finally, uh, what you think? Okay. So I would say pretty much the same thing. Customer service is your main priority. Right. I mean, our goal is to get students in and help them succeed. So um, kind of on the same line as this, you know, the students are always right, which is not always the right thing, but we just kind of have to just kind of go with it and help them along the way um, to see it our way, but you have to find a way to make them see it our way. Right. Um, so, you know, push positive, um, stay firm, and you can, um, normally the customer service comes right. with that. You just, because no two people are the same. Yeah. I know one of the things I learned when I started teaching was that uh, I started seeing it from a teacher's standpoint and not a student standpoint. And so I know when I, many of the times as a student, if I got frustrated at something, it was because uh, it wasn't because I, I hated the subject or anything like that. It's because it wasn't properly explained to me. And so, right. you know, communication, uh, right. the teacher explaining it better to the students so that they fully understand it. Mm -hmm. is some, and, and, you know, communication and missions and all that kind of stuff, it, it, 
can greatly help. Not all the time, but yeah, it, yeah you're right. Sometimes you just have to reward it just a little bit so yeah. that it actually clicks and they understand. Right. Or my personality may be different than your personality, you know, from my employer down the hallway. Right. You know, um, and sometimes different personalities don't work together. So sometimes, you know, we're a team, we just have to kind of help each other out and right. say it a different way and come, come at a different approach and, and they're good. Okay. Uh, typical work day. Well, mine varies. Um, okay. You can go in and open the store. So um, usually for a manager, what I do is go in, I open the store, make sure everyone is there. You know, that's key. Um, <laughs> so making sure everyone's there in their position, knowing what they're doing. Um, the one thing that I, I train leaders to become, or I train team members to become leaders. And so the one thing that I always tell them is what I said earlier is communication. So you have to make sure your team knows what they're doing. Um, so I make a point to go and speak with everyone to tell them the game plan for the day and not just throw it up on a piece of paper hoping they will read it. So um, talking to everyone, making sure that they know the game plan for the whole day, making sure that they're in their positions um, and really just making sure that they have a good day. Because um, I love to make, have a good day and not it's just not all about business. Um, so I make it fun at work and so that's I just go around and make sure they're doing their job and positively, positively um, impact them in whatever, I, whatever the case may be. Time you get there? Uh, well, to open the store is 5.30. Okay. So, and usually, so it's like 5.30 to about 3.30 or 4 o'clock. So you have okay. to make sure that everything is done. Like the shift ends at 2, but you still have to make sure that the other shift comes in and that right. they're set up for success. And then we have a little bit of paperwork I have to do in the office um, after my shift. So. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Typical work day. Um, usually I get all my deposits ready for the day um, and then get those keyed into our accounting right. records in a timely manner. Um, that's a very important. It's um, like we spoke about earlier, it's the time management and everything. Um, that's a really key concept in accounting. You know, you've got a bunch of stuff coming at you. You've got to kind of prioritize what right. you want to do. Um, but you know, get my daily deposits. Uh, I have time cards that come in um, usually on Mondays. I go ahead and get those keyed into our system and process payroll every two weeks. Um, I do accounts payable. I have two companies right now that I do accounts payable for. One's a little smaller and I make up checks every two weeks or so. The other one's a lot larger and pretty much daily I'm topping up my accounts payable and getting them ready to key into the system. and. Um, get them approved and then I cut checks weekly. So. Okay. Typical work day okay. for you? Um, normally it's um, it's never really the same. So we could walk in and pretty much just like her walk in and not see any students and actually get caught up on paperwork and um, everything that's behind the scenes and then there's some days that it's just constantly seeing students all day long. Um, Pretty much the students are the number one priority, so whatever we have to do to get them in the door, get them accepted, um, that's what we're doing. Okay. All right. Um, workplace hazards. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean, hey, watch out when the floor is wet, sign is up, that kind of <laughs> thing. Um, be honest, uh, what are some hazards that you have probably seen uh, that they need to watch out for in, this, in, in your fields? Um. Like being an employee of Chick-fil-A, trying to get, trying to apply for Chick-fil-A, you don't really see any hazards um, per se. So, but working there, that's when you, you know, have to deal with customers and right. you know the whole people not liking Chick-fil-A because they stand for Christianity, you know right. that thing. Um, so just dealing with people in general right. is and not that people are hazards not saying that but their views on right. what you know we play christian music in the background um and when we are closed on sundays and so really that's the only thing that they have on chick play and so they like hammer that into the ground so um, just trying to deal with that because they'll come in and just ask you random questions well do you have to be a christian to work here right. and so happen to know how to answer that right. um definitely is is a hazard. I'm How sure. many times has a, a customer come in saying you can't do that, it's illegal? Yeah, a, a lot. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, it's yeah. crazy. I opened the Chick-fil-A in New York 
and it was insane of how they, there were so many protests a day like they would come in like a lot of people would just come in and protest to play and so that was actually my first time ever being in a protest right. so it was kind of scary but um that's a good experience though. it is it's, i mean it's, it's, especially it if you want to be i mean that's really good yes definitely yeah. it was it was an eye-opener and so um yeah just dealing with the people that don't really agree with what we stand for right. is is a uh, something that's you have to you know learn and how to how to handle okay. si different situations All right Workplace hazards. Um, accounting isn't a very active career. I mean, you're you guys don't have like an accounting <laughs> fight club where you everybody no. just get your yeah. abacus and start throwing each other. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, so most of your day is going to be sitting behind a desk, um, you know, walking up down the hallway and you know doing copies, you know, that kind of thing. So the main hazard I could think of was the fact that you're not so active. You need to. Uh, make sure you practice good ergonomic skills and stuff like that. So, I mean, you may develop carpal tunnel, right. and, you know, you know, stuff like that. But also, um, ethics is a really big, big topic in accounting. Um, so you want to make sure that you're very ethical. And um, if you are a CPA or any kind of other certification, um, you could risk losing your license if you didn't act in an ethical manner. Um, that's really the. If you lose your license, can you get it back? I think there's, I think you can, but there's a lot of um, stuff you have to go through to, right. you know, prove to them that you are ethical and this was like a one-time mistake type it's thing. It's a very and, difficult process, yes. in other words. So, okay. So, kind of um, like trust. Once you lose it, it's really hard to get back. Right, right. <laughs> so. And workplace hazards. I would say it would have to do with customer service, the students coming right. in. Um, for example, we had a student that came in and that was upset. Um, he punched the wall. I mean, you have to learn to deal with with stuff like that, I mean, campus security and, and different things. So okay. um, it would be along the customer service line um, is the only hazards I could think of. Right. Yeah, anytime you deal with people, you have to expect yeah. the unexpected. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's pretty much, unless you're a mortician, that's pretty much anything. I mean, <laughs> uh, when you have to deal with people, sorry, I couldn't think of any other jobs. That, uh, maybe a ditch digger, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I do, I do want to touch on your point um, because I, I have to sit at a computer. Uh, when I, back when I was doing game design, I, I would sit at a computer for 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have the bad back to prove it. Yeah. Um, and so uh, posture, sitting posture. Yes. Um, I didn't really need the ergonomic keyboards. I didn't develop carpal tunnel, but um, some people do. Some people might. Um, and uh, nowadays, the, I don't know if you guys utilize this, but they have... Uh, these um, they're like yoga balls that you sit on oh, yeah. they don't yeah. have backs to them and it forces you to sit up straight I don't know if you've ever seen those before they had they're in California a lot which says a lot but <laughs> um, they're they're difficult to sit on but they're supposed to force yeah. you in the right posture mm -hmm. uh, which is helpful um, okay um, final question and then we'll open up to students uh, where do you see this profession heading or evolving within the next 15 to 20 years the Chick fil A in general, um, we are opening up in every state, you know, trying to get them in everywhere. Right. Um, you know, just like the New York store I touched on earlier, we put two in New York within like two weeks of each other, and now there's another one. Um, so we're trying to expand nation or everywhere in the states. Right. Um, also, we're definitely going to uh, more technology. So, you know, the whole iPads outside that y'all see, we're trying to utilize. Um, utilize them so we can get cars in or and out faster, in and out faster. Um, so definitely more technology, opening up more more Chick Fil A's. That way we can accommodate more people and not just having you know one in one city and 40 miles away from right. something else. So um, yeah, so just expanding in general. Okay. Yeah, you guys are pretty good at that rush hour, man. We, we like, try to be. <laughs> yeah, I can get my chicken biscuit in like 15 minutes in the lines out to the highway, yeah. so it's pretty good. All right. Um, I just, like, as she said about technology, um, technology is just a big factor in accounting. Um, it's constantly expanding. So um, being able to keep up with the accounting um, changes in technology is very important. Um, you got your basic computer skills classes uh, most of the time that you have when you graduate, but mm -hmm. uh, keeping up with them and any type of you know webinar or anything like that that you see um, on technology would be very beneficial to keep up with and uh, I feel like the changes in technology will uh, help with our uh, timeliness of accounting records and efficiency of getting them to where they need to be and um, that's 
technology, I think, is going to be a very big factor. Okay. Um, what, what software do you use? We have Bossa Nova. Okay. So, um, it's a very unique system. <laughs> is it a proprietary, like just Langdell, or is it a commercial software that you, um, you can purchase? I would think it's commercial software, okay. but I'm okay. not positive on that. Don't quote me on uh, that. Well, <laughs> I, I only bring that up because software updates every year. Yes. And uh, especially with the tax code, yeah, that updates. Yes, it's constantly every minute. changing. Um, so you have to keep constantly up to date on that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, and where do you see? Uh, education field of what you do uh, evolving? Um, well, enrollment has been rising. Um, so I'm hoping that enrollment continues to rise. New programs come to Wiregrass. Right. Um, and... Well, have you had to learn any new software within the past couple of years for your job? I have not for my job, not okay. any new. Okay. They didn't get you on Banner or anything like that? You don't use Oh, that, well, do I mean, well, that's not new to me now, but yes, right. I do do Banner. Yeah. <laughs> well, ba Banner, for those Banner of you who don't know, is software, it's yeah. our software. It's also a huge database system that stores all the students' information in. Right. They just updated a couple of years ago, I thought. Maybe, I don't know. I, I think they remember. just updated not too long ago. Well, yeah, and, and so mostly changed the interface, but it yeah, is something that you, you have to update. And right. I, I only just bring that up because there's a lot of students who swear up and down they'll never use a computer don't want to use a computer and right you know I, it's like i hate to tell you but you may have to and no matter what you do so yeah and i'm <laughs> sure a lot of we're going to have a lot of you know technology advances as right. well um everything is based on technology and i'm sure as as it expands we will expand to right. eventually okay all right uh we're going to open this up to questions from the students so let me get up here and so does anybody have any questions that they want to ask? Any takers? If not, I'm going to shove this microphone in front of someone. <laughs> All right, let's bring this over. All right, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, what would you say your best personality trait that helps you with your job? As far as is it you're highly patient or you're very determined, you're persistent, or anything in that matter? Uh, what job are you talking about? It could be either yeah. one of them. Okay. For me, <laughs> um, I would say, like, I'm a people person, and so I, I love making someone happy. And so that's what Chick fil A is about is I just, we just want to put a smile on your face and give you a chicken biscuit on the side. So, um, <laughs> so definitely just being, being able to accommodate to whatever person that you're dealing with, um, that's, that's what I would say for me. Um, I'm a people person, definitely in accounting as well. Um, time management, uh, definitely a trying, to, trying to find a stress management technique that works for you. Um, accounting can be stressful if you let it get to you. Um, there's going to be due dates, you know, that might be the same across the board for all these different tasks. So um, learning how to prior prioritize, <laughs> sorry, and um, just kind of refocus your energy on the task at hand and not let it get to you. Um, I totally went blank. <laughs> <laughs> I said I totally went blank. Uh, what, what um, um, I would say that. I'm like a, a versatile, you know, you kind of got to learn to adjust to how the students are. So um, I'm more of a, of a people person. Um, so, but learning to be versatile, you know, to the different personalities is definitely a, a plus. Okay. Are you a people person? Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay. I really do feel like Phil Donahue at this moment. It feels great. <laughs> yeah. um, this is for the accountant. You encouraged using the job fairs. What was the, I guess, the time lapse from when you graduated to when you actually found a job? I actually uh, found my job while I was still in school. I had uh, about a, probably a semester and a half left of, um, of my bachelor's degree program and, um, you know, visited with our, um, it's called Meet the Firms, and they have, uh, I was able to go in for an interview probably two or three weeks later, and um, I had the job, and they were they worked with me part time while I finished that last semester, and then I went on to complete my master's program, and they actually helped me um, get through my master's program working part time as well as um, 
helping with tuition, and so that was really, really helpful. Awesome. <laughs> Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thank you all very much for doing this. Um, hopefully, all of you uh, got uh, at least some information out of it. I really hope so. Um, if um, if you miss anything or when we rewatch this, uh, we will have it on our YouTube and Facebook channel. Um, and especially with the noise back there, hopefully uh, that didn't drown out too much at the beginning. But uh, uh, but I do thank all of you for coming. I thank all of you for showing up as well. Uh, okay. And uh, next episode, we will have uh, hopefully the CIS department. Thank you. Thank you.